guys, I was just talking to one of you guys in the comments and decided to do a quick tutorial on grid snapping as he was thinking about doing that anyways. So I thought I might help out with a quick tutorial. Uh, it concerns a dynamic wall creation tutorial and is kind of an extension to that which improves the wall creation process to have grid snapping. So there's two things that I did. Um, and let me just open Unity. Um, I just modified the create walls script, uh, which is attached to the main camera in the project. And um, I did three things. The first thing I did is to create a grid snap function. You feed in your original position and you get a snapped position back. You can um, adjust the granularity. I just put it to one because I want to have like um, every possible position, but you can uh, play around with that actually. So how do I calculate the snap position? I just go uh, and use the function mav.floor, mavf.floor, and I clamp the original position x to uh, to the next int, basically, to the next integer number. Um, so we get the kind of grid snapping of the position of grid snapping. What the gran what do I do with the granularity? Well, I divide by the granularity first, so I get like a smaller number. Then I do the math floor, and then I multiply by the granularity. So basically, um, well, let's. Uh, Say if I have, I don't know, um, 15.8 and I want to snap to values of granularity of 2. So what happens there, math wise? So I divide by the granularity, so we get divided by 2, so it's something like 7.9. Um, then we clamp the uh, position to the next floor, so we just go. 7 becomes 7.9 actually becomes 7 and then I go times granularity so granularity is 2 so we go times 2 what happens if we go 7 times 2 we get 14 so 15.8 gets clamped to the next um, to the next uh, value uh, by 2 for example and well, if we do 3 what happens here 15.8 by 3 What's that? It's uh, 5 point something. I don't know what. It doesn't matter really. Uh, so we clamp it to 5. Right. And then we go times 3. So we get 15. And 15 is actually the next value clamped to values of 3. If we go like 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 from 15.8. So this is really quite a nice um, grid snapping function with built-in granularity here. Um, so we clamp our x position and of course our z position. We won't want to clamp our y position because then we might, you know, um, go through the floor, you know, we right now we just stay on the floor that we create our wall on, and that's great. So we don't want to do any clamping to other values, to integer values there. So we have this nice grid snap function, and all we do now is uh, to grid snap our um, starting position actually as well. I just forgot that by now. So we go now set start, and we grid snap the work point that we retrieve. Um, then we grid snap the world point we get in the set end function, and we grid snap the world point we get uh, in the adjust function. So basically, well, now we won't need this one. I had it there before. Um, now it's redundant. I just doubled it. Okay. Um, we just basically grid snap all the positions that we retrieve from the get world point. So everywhere where you got get world point before, you put a grid snap function around, and that effectively uh, clamps the position. So now it got clamped to positions of three, for example. So my granularity is as such, so I get 
increments of three, like it's three meters, three meters, three more meters. If you don't want that kind of um, granularity, if you still want to, you can do such nice diagonals now. Oops. A bit, um, so you would need some visual kind of representation to know where you're actually clicking. It's a bit hard right now, but it works pretty well. Um, yeah. And another thing I did, is, let me just put the granularity back down to one as I actually find that a lot neater. So if I have the granularity at one, it looks like this. You have like snapping of one. See if I move my mouse slowly, it increments by one. That's our grid snapping function at work. And of course here we can do nice di diagonals. And I actually thought of something to um, restrict these diagonals. Like I have nice and short increments of one here, but these diagonals are not very nice. So uh, on X and Z key on my keyboard, I put um, like uh, X and Y direction snapping, which is really cool because I can now move my mouse up and down uh, and still snaps on the Y axis or on the Y axis. Or Z axis actually, if we think in 3D world coordinates. So now I just placed it the wrong way. Um, so basically I can start dragging my wall and I just press my uh, Z key and then it snaps to that position. And then I can leave go and then it's there. And like this, I can do still diagonal walls if I want to, but I can do grid snap walls, which look perfectly straight, aligned to the X and Y axis. So this was also really, really simple. Um, what did I do for that? I introduced two booleans, X snapping and Z snapping. And these are actually the wrong way around. I was lying before by pressing the Z key, I pressed my X key. But you know, that's just a minor adjustment that you can make. Um, maybe it's because my camera has shifted or something, maybe I'm just, you know, I don't know, it's rotation I actually need. Okay. Mm. So we press, we just get the input in the get input function. I just extended that to get key of X and get key of Y because I'm on a German keyboard. So uh, they're next to each other, it's nicer. Uh, do whatever key you have there. So, uh, right. And I just set X snapping or Z snapping to true or to false if we don't get the key anymore. And then, where did I put it? Probably, yeah, right um, in the adjust function. So in the adjust function, um, between retrieving the end transform position point, which is also grid snapped, and adjusting the wall, which would happen down here, we uh, do the um, snapping to the X and Y axis if the boolean is true, so if we're currently pressing the keys. And that's basically all we need to do to achieve this nice grid snapping effect. Yep. Okay, I think the next stage would uh, be to create something to um, you know, connect to the last wall. If I click on it, I detect that I click on it and it's like now I was just lucky. Um, but it would be nice to have something to detect the last wall. So here I just didn't connect them. So there's space in between. And maybe a step after that would be to change the tool and grab the wall and actually, you know, push it a bit over here so it's connected to these two walls. Maybe more on that later.